here we are talking about the problem solving course. I'm Maria, this is Dor. And Hi. I'll start with a tough question. So when it comes to kids and math, what are your dreams, Dor? What well, what is all about? I want kids to to love math the way they love, you know, their Lego or their 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 pop up books or uh, hiking or swimming. It's it's a uh, it's an activity. It's it's a practice. It's it's a whole world. And I mean, when kids start whatever wall climbing or or you know playing the violin or something, it's it's not something that they've been usually uh, not exposed to before. And in any case, if they have been exposed, it's always in optimal conditions. Seeing somebody doing something cool or hearing about an older sibling or, or friend doing that thing or seeing it on TV and saying, gee, I want to do that. And, well, when it comes to math, it's pretty different because they already have certain ideas of what math is. And those ideas, ideas are very much school-based, school-driven, school inspired <laughs> so uh so i i'm just hoping to to create an alternative uh, uh model and a, a resource a source of inspiration and just sense of what of what this actually uh is what math is as as a way of of uh, acting and seeing and doing and interacting and communicating and being and identifying and and growing so that's what i'm looking for in the in my alternative and of course my phone just ringing now i'll just have to tell this person uh, eel i'm in a interview right now i'll call you back in five minutes bye uh, <laughs> uh so that's where i'm hoping you know, to take this project okay so you say these examples of lovable things are whole worlds. They yeah. are, and people come into them through love and proper inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> how now with math? How can we do that? <laughs> well, we need to. Uh, <clears throat> we need to think about uh, what draws kids into doing the things that they choose to do that we as adults also approve of. So I'm, I, can't, I guess I'm speaking not best about only eating candy or only, you know, watching uh, teenage sitcoms that they shouldn't be looking at anyway. But, like, what are the things that draw them to do those things that we come and look, take a look and say, oh, wow, yeah. That. So what draws them to do that? They... If I think of, uh, I keep on falling back on Lego. I know it's kind of a hackneyed example. It's a big world. It's, it's a big yeah. universe. Well, it's a sandbox. Uh, it's 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 a it's a place for for imagining. It's it's a means for realizing uh, imagination. So, Dor, I'm catching three kind of big themes in what you are saying. Mm -hmm. One is love and choices. It's something kids choose to do and come to on their own, but together with other people who love it and think it's cool. Yeah. So it's kind of a community choice almost. It's a group of people who choose to love it and put a lot of love in it, right? Yeah, I mean, in, I mean, in the broadest sense, anything we do is, is embedded in our uh, community and culture just by virtue of the fact that these Memes are around, and the resources are around, and the values and the opportunity uh, for somebody, you know. But I mean, one could, in in principle, do things alone, and very young children often prefer doing things alone. Uh, but obviously, uh, there are advantages to, to doing things not alone. And certainly, I mean, if you take an example of a child engaged in some kind of construction activity then they're constantly challenging themselves. Uh, now, it, it just can so be that uh, as a culture, there are certain objectives of, of knowledge that unless they are modeled for a child or suggested or pushed towards, it's just unlikely the child would discover this, them on, the, on their own. I mean, it took 
our civilization many uh, millennia to to develop them to develop Legos. So, to develop Lego as well, uh, but certainly to but to develop uh, certain ways of of looking and thinking, and uh, yeah, it's, I always think of of it as some kind of design challenge to create opportunities and and utilities for these big ideas uh, within uh, the, the the child's world. So, so that's that, the inspiration part, right? The inspiration comes from the millennia of cool things being built. Well, that's interesting that we're, we're kind of speaking about two things in, in a kind of parallel way because mm-hmm. there are the, uh, the, all these resources such as the construction uh, materials. But then maybe there are big ideas such as prime numbers which may not necessarily emerge for the child on her own as she's working with Lego. Or something else. So, so there's certain materials and certain activities and certain well problems that are steering towards those ideas and make those ideas instrumental. I think that's a very important word for me. Yes. That big ideas should be instrumental within the child's uh, preferred environment. They become. What does it mean for you, Dor? What does the big word mean for you? The word, the word instrumental. Mm-hmm. It means that they come to serve the child in realizing their own uh, imagination and thoughts, uh, so that knowing or understanding is in the service of something the child cares for. Cares for from from within themselves, not uh, through uh, pure indoctrination. So your big dream is to give children tools, instruments, to realize their dreams. Powerful tools for powerful dreams of their own. Yeah, I guess so. Where... um, their own dreams are in interaction with the environments that we create for them. So, at one time it's a box of Legos, sometime, other time it'll be a box of a couple of uh, planks, or it could be uh, marbles, or it could be, I mean, the environment we put children in includes the artifacts that, and maybe some minimal modeling of uh, how they, you know, fit together, what their uh, assembly rules are. But beyond that, the problems, uh, they can emerge through the construction, but then that's where the interesting, you know, the proverbial and perennial tension is between the child coming from what they want and the adult uh, having a sense of big ideas they would like for the children to develop, such as odd and even numbers. I mean... The child might see various um, instantiations of that, but it's not that they're really seeing an instantiation of prime numbers. The adult comes along and says, oh, here's an instantiation of of, uh, odd and even numbers or prime numbers. For the child, it's just some kind of situation that they are in, and there are certain features of the situation that may or may not be relevant to what they're trying to accomplish, or they might just be... Uh, perceived as some kind of uh, cool pattern that they're attending to or not attending to. And the question is how to uh, make those uh, embedded or implicit um, uh, patterns, often perceptual patterns or dynamical actions and experiences, how to uh, dress them up or how to um encode or or um frame them as worthy of attention and and the again the where, where the attention is uh, attention and tension it's interesting the the tension here is that the attention is is between what the child wants and what the the adult wants and it's it's a it's it's a dance you know it shouldn't be a battle it should be a dance so you dance with the kids patterns and frames and as you dance you gradually 
uh, stir the partner toward the shared understanding. Uh, yeah. Often it starts just by creating some spontaneous vocabulary to refer to something that we see. And then that thing that we see, which was uh, a complex, well, uh, a pattern, suddenly it becomes a thing unto itself. It is an, an object of sorts. It has a name. It can be a silly name. It doesn't have to be the mathematical name, but there's something that we can refer to and talk about that and study it together. So uh, it um, you you already planned some activities towards that end with mm. the problems. Mm -hmm. So do you think your plans will lead to that dance, to, to your dreams coming true? <laughs> My dreams? Well, um, I think it will be certainly something noticeable. For example, if a children stand in a circle holding hands and then every other person turns around facing outside, well, either it will work or it will not. Uh, equal chance whether as, whether as we complete that arrangement, the last two people, if they're holding hands straight or backwards. And it's kind of odd, or, or even... <laughs> Uh, like, why did that happen, or why, or why did it not happen, and what what is the principle here? And can we know in advance if there's something about the group that we can look at and study? Maybe it's just because there were only girls. Maybe it works for maybe for boys it always works. <laughs> maybe it's because uh, there were there there were a few grown ups and that's messed it up. I don't know what is it about about the group that makes it sometimes work and sometimes not work. Maybe there's no rule to it. Maybe it's just random, and we'll we can never know. We just always have to go through it empirically. But I mean that's that's kind of a, a moment. That's 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 a uh, pattern, mm -hmm. and it is rule based. And either you notice it or you or you don't. And then either you care for it or you don't care, which is where the design comes in. What you know? What is it about the situation that I should care about that particular feature of the situation? How is that feature? I mean, we could also look at who's wearing, uh, you know, bright shirts and who isn't, who has glasses and who isn't. But how is it that that particular feature of can we complete the pattern of front, uh, or, no, front back, front back, or not? How is that particular feature of the situation? Um, interesting enough for the kids to want to uh, pursue it. How might it serve something that they care for? And that's always the big, uh, the big dilemma. You have a bunch of kids, each coming in with their own stuff, and why should they all want to talk about that nerdy thing that's <laughs> happened here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, your dreams that they would, right? They um, uh, yes, yes that we set things up such that they would. So that it becomes a thing that we can refer to. And it doesn't have to be too elaborate. It just has to be something that everybody notices. And we gave it some name, uh, the flip-flop thing, or the funny number, uh, or the uh, backwards-forwards thing. It doesn't really not matter what we call it. As long as when I see it somewhere else, I can say to the kid, hey, this reminds me of what we did the other day. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, it kind of does and kind of doesn't because now we're talking about something else, <laughs> about pencils facing backwards and, you know, and not people or, right? So the naming so, seems important there. It does, yeah. Naming, a name acts as a, as a reference. It's, it's a cultural construction, a microcultural, nanocultural <laughs> construction that later... It serves as a as as a reference to re evoke an experience, but from a particular perspective of that sort of proto concept that we're working towards. And it can be a word, it could be a diagram, it could be all kinds of stuff, all kind of. But it's all you know some kind of semiotic means of objectification. It's it's a it's something that you create, which you can l later. Um, uh, refer to, and maybe you can see that thing somewhere else. Maybe you'll be in some other completely different situation. You'll be walking around IKEA. Suddenly, you'll notice something, and somebody will say, "Hey, that was like the flip flop numbers." No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Like, why? Well, it, it is and it isn't. So, what you know? What's common? And that thing that is common is is the concept ultimately. So that's what we're looking for. Many. 
everyday situations that are somehow similar, even though superficially they're different, in some particular way they're the same. And, you know, the more and more and more of these kind of situations that you see and you name by the same name, eventually you have the idea. And naming uh, helps people to care, helps people to love. It's a big power. It comes up in a yeah. lot of mythologies as such, the power to name or the power mm -hmm. of the name. And it also creates an uh, insider-outsider uh, criterion. Okay. That's also in, also in mythology, well, in the Bible, there's something called a sibolith. There's certain ways of talking that identify you as belonging or not belonging to a certain group, tribe, if you will. Um, so then it's it's nice to be able to evoke that. Remember, remember when we were doing so and so. That also speaks to the to the. Um, uh, Our tribe is together. It it yes, creates the to togetherness the, of the tribe. To the history and, and constitution of of the of the tribe. Yeah. Wow. So it's interesting how little problems connect to the big dreams. <laughs> and we can talk yeah, about the connections. We can see. It has to be little problems because it's little kids. Yeah. But, but with us, it's, with adults, it's the same. It all starts when you're, I don't know, when you're brushing your teeth, you notice something. It's, it has to start from somewhere. It's not like that you're sitting down and you suddenly go... Oh, in Fermat's theorem, it's... No, it's... No, that's how you solve it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Need a different toothpaste, yeah. I'm yeah. really looking forward to the stories of how it goes and how it connects to your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. <laughs> This week, right? Play with kids? Uh, we, need, we need to schedule still, but... Uh, okay. Yeah, Scheduling is always fun. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, Dor, um, now a question about you. This is a course, and we are peer learners. What do you hope to learn in the next three weeks? Um, well, it so happens that I'm about to go away on a whole year uh, on sabbatical, and our younger kid will be homeschooled during that time. So I'm hoping to get some tools from this course for um, training the homeschool teacher, because it won't be us most of the time, uh, to think in productive ways about uh, generative play. W ways of getting, getting places in the curriculum through starting out with just trains or whatever. Just like I heard about the... Uh, Chessboard, chess-based curriculum. We're thinking we might uh, develop a trains-based uh, math curriculum. So you hope to learn to start with the child's existing interest, and then uh, what your son loves already, and go to curriculum from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tied to particular interest. I've seen people already who who are planning things to tie to their kids' interests to to work on that. So mm -hmm. I I expect we'll collect some good data on how to do it and see yeah. but it's it's mostly what we plan and try uh, mm -hmm. that, that's what, mm -hmm. well, okay thank you we might call it if he works with Thomas and so on we'll call it a math training <laughs> oh bad <laughs> okay I just want to keep on track <laughs> oh. okay. no more okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, so let's see where um, this train of thought takes us. <laughs> okay, now, now you stop it. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, uh, it leaves the station. So, <laughs> okay, I'm stopping. <laughs> I'm stopping, I promise. Red light. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so, um, do, do, you, do you have more questions or comments about this experience we are just starting so anything to say about the course so far no just to uh to thank all of you for um initiating this and steering this i know it's a big uh, logistical challenge and i'm hoping that you yourself will learn from this how to 
kind of relegate it and uh, how to uh, build the, the empire that this should be. Sure. Yes. Um, it, it's getting there. So this, this July, so many little circles are starting, even in this mm. course as we watch. It's uh, it's nice to see. I, I hope to learn about categories of adaptation. So some uh-huh. are already emerging from what people are saying. So what you hope to learn is a category, how to adapt to an existing strong interest. Uh-huh. But uh-huh. there are different categories too. So they haven't saturated yet, but it's getting there. So that's what mm. my big hope to learn is. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording. Okay. Um, when I find where? Okay. <laughs>